Paul's doing there then, Charles? <laughs> well, what's doing, what we're doing here is these are all the new panels. And as you've seen down there, behind you, they all come in the black. Uh, so it looks like eco, but it's not actually proper eco because it just comes off with thinners. So I'm just going over it all with thinners and just some wire wall, taking all the stickers off, cleaning them all up, ready to weld in. We'll put our own like epoxy primer on it. So I thought I'd better get on with this because Stan, who's holding the camera, has been flat out on the shell getting all those bits repaired and getting it all cleaned up. So I thought I'd better do this job. Just to keep up. Yeah, try and keep up so we can start putting some new panels in. I would say that was a success. See those bits of chassis line up onto the jig, like that, and we'll put these bolt holes back in, and then we can start lining the floors up with the radius arm mounts and everything to go on there. That's that, really. And it's done. Yeah, send it all the way up, mate. Right, now, as I think I've said before in the video, I might not have, but I'll tell you again. We've just gone to fit the first new panel, and I know it's good that you can buy panels, and when you tell people you can buy them, they're like, oh, that's mint, you just buy the panels and weld them together, and then you've got a car, and it's brilliant. But we've already found that both the floor pans are already different to each other. So basically, we've got a slight issue at the minute with the radius arm mount doesn't go in far enough, doesn't line up with the hole. And it's being stopped by the flange along here on the floor. But if you look at this panel that's been spot welded on, it's quite far away from the edge. But if you look at the other floor pan, whether you can see it or not, this edge, this flange here is a lot closer to this upright flange here. So there's already differences between the panels. So we're gonna have to unfold and then refold that flange that runs along the full length, adjust the back one, bring the floor pan in so our radius arm mounts go in the right place. And then we'll start working on the next panel. And that is basically what it will be like with every single panel that we bought for this. And that's what takes time. I've heard stories of people buying the panels and then ringing up the factory and being like, oh, the panels don't fit. And it's like, no shit. They didn't fit when they were new. They're crap. They were built in the 60s by people who didn't give a fuck. So um, now they're being built in... Yeah, 2022 by people who didn't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so that's what we're doing. We'll sort of keep you updated through each panel we put on and the issues that it gives and how we get round it. And then at the end, when it's all put together and we see it drive down the road crabbing, you know we've done a good job. Yeah, so that wasn't very hard. Yeah. I'll be like, that's where we would shorten that floor pan. Down the road. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's what we're gonna do now. Nice, Catch thank you. That. So, yeah. we're, so we're gonna tap it over and re rebending, like, yeah. like proper. Yeah. Update on the 2 plus 2. Stan is burning himself and dropping the spot welder. But you can see that now we have the floor pans in where they need to be. We've done a bit of jiggery pokery, measuring them off. We've put a center line with the laser and then obviously drawn it on with pen through the center of the car and then worked our way out from that. And we've also down here, you can see it's clamped on. That's the mounts for the front framework that goes on. So we've been getting those in the correct position. And that's what Stan is now around here. Starting to spot weld in these front panels. You have the servo goes on this side. You can see that's where the bolts are for that front framework, which is somewhere up on the wall here. 
Where am I looking? The bottom right hand. There, it goes on to those, there. Then the top ones go into here. Blah, 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 blah. So that is where we're at at the minute. And once we've got all this front welded up, we're going to leave that floor to the sill for a minute. We're not gonna weld along there. We're gonna concentrate on the back corner here, getting the chassis leg in and then mounting that to the jig as well. And then we'll work our way back forward and get everything connected up as we go through. So at the minute, the bulkhead is only tacked to the seals there. So we'll go around with a spot welder and weld those in properly. And you can see these slug welds along the floor here and here. They've been welded to the main chassis underneath. So the floor sat where we need it to be. And then the bit on the seal, we'll address that at a later stage. All right then, we've just done loads of welding on the 2 plus 2, which basically, did you smash your head, Stan? It's just caught it. <laughs> if you can see Stan, it's camouflage. All of these front panels, and we went right the way through the floors, and obviously you saw where we welded there before, we now welded to the sides, and all of the front framework's all welded in around here, the A pillar uh, along the floor, up around the B pillar's done, that is all fairly solid now. We could probably take these bars out, but we'll leave them in for the time being. Like we said before on this area, we're gonna do the rest of the car and then we'll concentrate on that upper A pillar bulkhead thing afterwards. We have also put the rear chassis legs in underneath here. So I will quickly put the ramp up and run through what's gone on there. So we had a little bit of grief with the rear chassis legs so they bolt on to the jig here that we've made and that's where the cradle for the rear axle bolts on but the problem was where they've been made from factory this sort of triangle section here is then welded to the box section of the actual chassis leg and welded through there but when we put them on the jig and put them on the car, this piece and the tubes, which are inside, you can see run through, were basically like that. So it was anti-clockwise and they were tipping in. But we had to check everything else first to make sure that that is what the issue was. So we ended up having to take this triangle piece off of the bottom, which is welded along here and up the back was spot welded. And basically reposition it and weld it on again, which goes back to what I said earlier in the video, is just because you buy all these new parts, they've come from Jaguar specialists, you can't just expect to just weld them all together and you have like a perfect car. So you have to go through each piece, see how they fit, look it, measure it, check it. And yeah, not everything that you get is bang on perfect. So we've now got those positioned, bolted on, and the chassis legs are now welded in. So the next bit we're gonna do is get this front boot floor in there, and then we're gonna put the back of the boot floor in, and then that bolts on. This piece here will go through where the rear light, reverse light mounts in the boot floor. So that will give us our height, and then we can start tying it all into the wings and putting the rear tonneau cover on. So on the inside here, the next job, as you can see, we've epoxy primed and then gray primed through this center. Stan's got the new cross members and seat mounts. They're gonna go in there. We're gonna weld those through, and then we'll be able to put the last seat mount, which goes here for that, for the back corner rail somewhere. We'll put that on as well. We've got those. Do you wanna add anything to Stan or not? These didn't fit either. Oh yeah, they also didn't didn't fit. Not only were they too high for the floor, they were at the wrong angle. So the flanges, the flanges on the bottom, we straightened out the flanges and then refolded those. It actually looked more like this. Um, yeah, they did though, originally yeah. when we first put them in. So yeah, just another thing that, you know, you take it all with a pinch of salt, each new panel and um, try and make it fit. There we go, so get that welded in and that'll be handsome. So we've just gone to tack the cross members into position. We put the first one in, it got it tacked in and squared up so it's square with the seal. I've got an old seat rail, so I put the little piece in there and line those up with the holes. Not too bad. So I've just gone to tack this side in. And I've looked at the hole, and I mean, if you can look straight down, 
you can see that this original one that we haven't removed is here and it's we're like half an inch too far towards the out of the car so we already have another one of these panels because we accidentally got sent two for the same side even though he's labeled wrong uh, that's wrong yeah we got sent with the wrong label or whatever so i've just gone and got it and sort of dropped it in here and you can already see i mean it's supposed to be the same panel look where the look where the captive nut is on this one and look where it is on this one and it's the same at this end we're almost in the middle of that like if i measure that out from the seal three inches oh two and three quarter inches i mean it doesn't sound a lot but when you're trying to get a seat runner if you've ever fitted seat runners before you don't have to get them very far out and they don't slide forwards and backwards so this is what you're dealing with this is what you're dealing with so we're gonna have to now um remove the captive nuts bolt the seat frames all in properly and then re-weld captive nuts in so that it actually works. But other than that, it's all brilliant. Fucking perfect. Everything's brilliant. Yeah. Work on classic cars. You must have so much fun working on classic cars all day, every day. Fucking lucky. No, so that's the afternoon's job now. <laughs> Getting out of this piece of shit. <laughs> We're not on the ground. <laughs> We're not on the ground. Just get some action shots. Some action shots. Well, I was, my action was I was just about to tell you to do something. <laughs> <laughs> if we get that up where it needs to go, clamp it on, mark the back so we can epoxy that. And then if you're happy with the chassis legs all welded in, get all the epoxy in those mothers. And then we'll um, box it in and put the back on. Yep. Looking better. It's better already. Did we film it before or not? No, we just signed it up, didn't we? we oh, you're coming okay, back so to it. Okay, so this was, the seal was really flat against that curve there. So we just put a bit more curve in it. I'm just going to start chasing it round. So that's not far off now. And we're loads closer under here where we've got a weld to the floor. So before that was like coming down and almost at the same angle as that. It was a bit, a bit rubbish. She was flat, wasn't she? Yeah. I'll give that a little bit more loving. Uh, should be ready to go on. Financial guidance and support. We've supported over half a million people since 2004. Yeah. So whoever's yeah. energy. Yeah. Yeah. Put a little bit more cool up in there, man. Uh, in the seal, in the other seal, we've done one already. So obviously that's what we want. That's not. You see that? He's not perfect there, is he? No. I've just shrunk the edge, the flange, on the shrinker. Now I'm just going to hump it, hump it over this, this here gas bottle. down the lower section. I'll just run that through the wheel now just to smooth it a little bit. Now we can some All right, we are almost at the stage now where we're gonna start putting the back wings on. So I'll quickly show you where we've got to. As you can see this side, well, both sides, but a coupe has this inner arch section, which all goes in here, where the roadster only has this little piece at the back. So you can get to the underside of the wing. Um, but obviously the coupe has all of this inner arch. So what we, are doing is fitting all of that so it's screwed and clamped into position and then we're trimming the top edge of the arch so it's a nice straight cut and we'll put it on and we'll screw it along here and then trim this original wing 
to match. So if I go around here and show you at the side that Stan fodging up. So he's got the wing all screwed together and some of the inner arches just sat up inside just to hold it where we want it. But you can see what we've done here, where we screw them together and then we trim the original body there. So I'm push that down, you see the gap. Trim the original body, but we leave these little tabs on so we can just still screw the wing on. And then when we start tacking these together, as we get closer to the tack, we'll be able to just unscrew it and flick that tab off with um, a screwdriver. And we've just put a little cut. We just put a little cut in them there. So you'll be able to just flick them off and then we'll weld them all together. But where it's a little bit of a juggling act and a little bit chicken and egg sort of thing, because like I said, we've got that inner arch, we want to be able to get to the inside of that wing and planish it all smooth and planish it out. So we've had to make it at the minute so we can get the rear valance to come out a little bit and we'll pull those inner arches we'll pull those inner arches out so we can get up inside and weld and planish along this and then we'll slide the inner arches up inside after and then weld them all in so it was a little bit of a different to how we would normally do it but that's what we thought would be the best way and to give us like a real nice smooth join along the top of that wing so obviously you don't want to be putting like gallons and gallons of filler in there to sort that out. So we will crack on with that a little bit, put it on a time lapse of us tigging the wings on, and then hopefully by the end of the day, we'll have the wings on, the inner arches in, and we can start looking at this rear tunnel panel and move our way back forward through the car. So as you've just seen from the time lapse, we've slowly worked our way along the wing, front, back, middle, like going wherever it sort of fitted nice. And then slowly, when we got close, snapped those tags off that we had the screws in and it's all tacked along now. So the next bit that I'll do is I'll just flash the soft disc grinder just along these tacks and that will um, take the high spots off so we can planish it out and start to get rid of some of the um, sort of warped shape that goes through and then I'll be able to weld right the way through and it will be solid but welded together. Stands a little bit further ahead on this side. So he's already started to flick the grinder across and it will just show you the high and low spots. You can start planishing those out. Um, so that's what we're doing now. Once we've got that welded all the way and cleaned back and DA'd in and smoothed off, we will look at getting those inner arches in. And filler. Copious amounts of filler. So now I've flicked the soft disc across the tack weld, you can now see um, the difference between the two sort of panels where they're joined. So obviously it gets quite nice here and then it drops a bit low, the original here and along there. So what I'm gonna do now is just planish along the weld so we can get it all basically like this section is here where it's all a nice level. 
And then once I've got that close and I'm happy with that, then I'll do the continuous weld right the way through the wing. Alright then, that's the planishing done as you've just seen and then I've just flicked the grinder, the soft disc across it really lightly again. So now we've got a real sort of nice, is that going to focus? Real nice joint so I can weld that the full length along the wing right to the front. So I'm going to weld that all now and then that will obviously make the wing go a bit like and a bit like like that. So then I'll do exactly the same as what I've just done. Knock the top off the weld, planish it, take a little bit more off, planish it. Um, you just got to be careful not to work the grinder in flat out because you can get just as much warpage in the panel from the grinder as you can from the welder. And also be careful not to planish it too much because every time you hit it with the hammer and dolly you are stretching the metal um, which is then going to make it more grief for you um, and if that does happen which it can i'll show you how to rectify that if it comes to it stan will do that and then we'll fix it over that side <laughs> right let's push on with it then That's the weld there, pretty much continuous long weld. Pretty long one, it's stands, you're gonna measure it, are you? <laughs> um, so I'll just quickly knock the top of that off with the grinder, the soft disc, and then I'll start planishing it like I did when I tacked it together. And then hopefully it'll end up being handsome and lovely and beautiful. And we just gotta do the other side. So we've just knocked the tops off of the weld there with the soft disc and Stan's making a fucking shitload of noise. Yeah, so we just knocked the tops off of that weld with the soft disc and again, like when we tacked it, you can now just see the difference between, you know, the original and the old slightly height difference as it goes through, it sort of goes a bit like this. Exaggeration. Um, so I'll just run the hammer and dolly through there again and planish that out and again just real lightly with the soft disc we're barely like touching just letting the weight of the grinder flick across and i flick it one way flick it back and i'll smooth that out and hopefully she will turn out ha 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 handsome handsome she'll turn out Weld ground back, I've planished it and then I've smoothed it out. So you can see now it's actually come out quite nice. Don't know why I'm being so surprised. It's come out. But you can see there are a few holes, like here. Look, let me stand up on my camera. A few holes here and here and here. Now they're from where we screwed the panel on and snapped the tags off. Now, is it just a little thing I like to do, but I like to leave the holes right until the end because when you're grinding and planishing, you can end up warping the panel and you can actually use these holes when we weld them up is a little bit of a heat shrink to try and get some of the material back out of the panel. Luckily, it's gone quite well and it's, you know, it's quite nice. So I can just TIG these up and clean them back. But again, if it was warped, I could have used them. And when I go in with the TIG, I can go around in a circle like that and just really tighten that panel back up and get rid of any slack that we've got in there. So I weld them up, grind them back, put the DA over it and then move on to the next bit.
Bush. 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 <laughs>